Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and innovations from thought leaders from within the digital infrastructure industry. And we are coming at you live. That's right, we are live, Dave. Oh, no. From yeah, oh yeah, oh yes, oh yes, <laughs> from Data Cloud USA, Coco located with Metro Connect in beautiful downtown Austin. Texas. And this good looking guy to my right is Mr. Dave Campis. Dave is the vice president of carrier sales at Segra. Dave, welcome to JSA TV. Thank you for having me, Dean. Appreciate it. Of course, of course. Appreciate you being here. Yes, sir. Uh, how's the show going for you? Fantastic. Been a lot of really good panels. You know, <laughs> I made this comment yesterday on a panel that uh, I just say what we do for the industry at Segra, you know, while, while vitally important fiber infrastructure, isn't rocket science. I've changed that now. It's it's not quantum compute, computing, right? <laughs> Smart. That's a good call. Good call. So, but yeah, yeah. No, it's been a good show. Uh, okay, so I'm already going to go off script because you are maybe the fourth or fifth person who, in the conversation, immediately mentioned fiber. Yeah. Now, 10 years ago, we were talking about fiber all the time. Maybe even longer, 10, 15 years ago, we we're talking about fiber all the time. The 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 buzzword du jour lately, though, has been like power, power and space, cooling, cooling and cool and water and resource use and all that. Um, but you are now again the fourth or fifth person to mention fiber in that same conversation. And so yeah. that's what I really want to be talking about. I know that you've got a lot of really cool things yeah. to talk about too, and we're gonna get to those things first, but we are going to talk a little bit about fiber too. Fiber is my love language. So Yeah. <laughs> and and, it, and as, a, as kind of an old school uh, telecom guy, fiber is kind of, you know, and, yeah. and the networks that that network infrastructure, kind of my love language as well. So we're going to talk about that. But first, some exciting news coming out of your newsroom, right? Yeah. Yeah. We just had a press release yesterday. Um, you know, the, the Myrtle Beach Cable Landing Station is in our footprint. Um, However, we are, have just uh, released a press release yesterday about a new network deployment we're doing that is uh, a 400, 800 gig capable route, direct inland. It's the only direct inland route from the Myrtle Beach Cable Landing Station that comes back to our network in Charlotte, where we already have an express core network set up for that high capacity bandwidth. So this provides a new, very unique route out of that location to serve the the subsea community, as well as the hyperscale community, low latency, direct path, direct inland, no coastline exposure for, for hurricanes uh -huh. and all the bad weather coming through. And it, it really complements what DC Blocks already has in place there. So it's going to really a really nice partnership in making that happen. We love DC Blocks as well for, yeah. for, the, for what that's worth. Um, okay. Uh, other... So congratulations Thank you. Uh, on that. I want to talk about why that's important in just a moment. Sure. Uh, but any other initiatives, anything that uh, our, our audience might be interested in? Yeah. Uh, so since I last talked with you at PTC, we had completed a really large network investment into our mid-Atlantic and southeast networks. Mm -hmm. uh, think Ashburn to Atlanta and everything in between um, has been optimized and enhanced for greater bandwidth capabilities and, and higher protection. So a lot of a lot of investment went into that and that's mm -hmm. been completed. Um, we are owned by Cox Communications. Mm -hmm. Heard of them? And yep, they're <laughs> you know a little bit, right? You know, yeah, yeah. they've been around. Yeah, yeah. Um, and their national backbone is also being optimized for 400 gig. And we are creating on ramps for the Segra network as well. Uh, so we can more efficiently serve the entire telecommunications community from coast to coast. So that's really exciting too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I love the fact that you just said telecommunications community, community because that still exists. It does. It's <laughs> not, you know, AI is a big name. Yeah. Hyperscale is a big name. It's, it's telecommunications. Right? Yeah, no. And fiber infrastructure. And fiber infrastructure. So you said AI and fiber infrastructure in the same <laughs> sentence. And that's what I really want to talk let's about. Let's go for it. Yeah, let's do it. So, um, and, and I am not an engineer. I will never profess to be an engineer. But as I understand it, uh, and and uh, and my good friend uh, Scott Bergs just uh, mentioned he's just like um, a data center without fiber is just a really hot warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, I can't say it any better than that. Uh, yeah. Listen, you know. The where the data centers are being, like we're we're doing data center connectivity uh, for a lot of the the big companies, um, pretty much all of them that are within the urban setting, mm -hmm. that are urban adjacent, and rural. Yeah, 
And the fact of the matter is they've got to put them where there is available land and power and, and cooling capability. To be able to build power where there is existing fiber network costs a whole lot more than to build fiber to where the data center is going. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I mean, that that to me is... Uh... Is, is absolutely critical and I, and and now and it, and it is nice to see to hear fiber being part of part of that conversation and you know when we're talking about AI the fact that without those without those fiber connections and that that they, those really robust synchronous connections the the learning models ain't learning a thing no it's, it's a big dumb hot warehouse <laughs> yeah yeah big dumb <laughs> hot warehouse thank you thank you um, okay uh, Dave always a pleasure uh, your final thoughts how about a prediction in the industry? Man, you know, um, had you asked me to predict where we are today, five years ago, I, I wouldn't have been at this scale. That's what makes the question fun. Right? <laughs> I would not have been at this scale. And uh, the the amount of fiber, the amount of infrastructure that we're, we're designing, engineering, deploying, delivering for, for all these projects, I think will just continually to get bigger yeah. and will expand further out. And, um, you know, it's, it's incumbent on us, the service providers, the fiber network infrastructure providers, network operators, to look at each of these uh, opportunities and make sure it makes sense for what, what we're doing. I heard it said, you know, just because you can build it doesn't necessarily mean you should build it. Mm -hmm. And so while we want to support the ever expanding growth of this data center um, community and where these are being put, we all need to make sure we're doing it responsibly. And and because the last thing we need is for, uh, you know, those of us who are net network operators to to overextend ourselves. But, yeah, man, I'm all in. I, if it makes sense, I'm in. I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. Dave, thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. You bet. Great to see you again. You as well. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. We'll see you real soon.